Hello, my name is Elizabeth Martinez. Welcome to the Sunday morning service for Victorville United Methodist Church and the First United Methodist Mission of Barstow. We're glad that you could spend some time with us. We pray that you're well and would like to encourage you to share this video with anyone that may not have it easily accessible. You can find all our videos on our Facebook page, United Methodist Church of Victorville, or on our YouTube channel, Victorville United Methodist. You can also find our service in audio form by calling 760-245-2529. God bless you. We thank you for springtime and how it helps us to remember that you are always bringing new life into this world. We thank you, oh God, that you bring new life to our souls and that you remind us that you are always there with us. We thank you, oh God, for our risen Lord and for the power that has overcome and claimed the victory over death. We thank you, God, for this special day that we are gathered together. And we hope and pray that we will continue to celebrate our life in Christ all the rest of our days. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. This day of resurrection joy reminds us what is true, that Christ is raised and Christ is Lord, and we have work to do. Christ's reign has surely come to earth, 
and caught us by surprise. And we who know that wondrous truth are called to live new lives, are called to live new lives. One day when the disciples met, afraid behind locked doors, the Lord appeared and offered them a peace that still Just as the Father sent me forth, now I am sending you. He said, receive the Spirit's power and gave them work to do. And gave them work to do. So filled with rest. Resurrection joy, we make Christ's presence known. For Christ goes with us to each place, and we are not alone. We share our faith and serve the poor. We love, forgive, and pray. We trust the risen. comes from John, chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciples the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter, who was behind him, arrived and went into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the burial cloth that had been around Jesus' head. The cloth was folded up by itself, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes, but Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and, and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. Woman, he said, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking that he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned toward him, 
and cried out in our Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, do not hold on to me, for I have not yet returned to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them I am returning to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he, and she told them that he had said these things to her. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning, this beautiful Easter morning. Today's message is coming to you from Victorville United Methodist Church. When you encounter the living Jesus in the midst of crisis, everything changes. In our gospel lesson for this morning, we are confronted with a roller coaster of emotions. Our story begins in darkness. Mary Magdalene went to the tomb while it was still dark. What she had experienced and seen on Friday was still blazing through her. She had watched as Jesus Christ, her Lord and Savior, was beaten, nailed to a cross, and left to bleed and suffocate and eventually die. His body had been taken down, and instead of leaving it for the birds to peck and the dogs to eat, Joseph of Armethia and Nicodemus had gone to Pilate and asked for his body. They wrapped it in spices and strips of linen and laid it in the tomb. Then a large stone was rolled over the entrance, sealing it. It was the least that they could do for a man who had impressed them so. Saturday was the Sabbath, the day when no one could do any work. And what an awful day it must have been for the followers of Jesus. They had heard Jesus tell them that he would be arrested and killed, but they had never really believed it would actually happen. It just seemed too awful to be true. After all, they had dropped everything in order to follow Jesus, their jobs, their dreams, all of their plans. And they had been with him for three amazing years. They had listened to him talk about God and love in ways that no one had ever talked about before. His outlook on life was one of radical humility and servanthood. He had fed 5,000 people with a few fish and a couple of loaves of bread. He had healed the sick. He had raised the dead. He had made the possessed free. He had been their hope. He had been the answer to this puzzle called life. And now he was dead. It had happened so fast. What in the world would they do now? How could they go on? Was life even worth living anymore? Can you imagine the darkness? Can you imagine the pain? Can you imagine the feeling of hopelessness and crisis? Perhaps some of you can. Perhaps some of you are feeling that way this morning. Or maybe you can relate because you have been there. Do you remember what it was like? I think most of us come to a point in our lives when we come face to face with the stark reality of crisis. On Easter morning, Mary Magdalene stood outside of Jesus' tomb crying. She had come to mourn and show her respects to the one who had meant everything in the world to her. 
What else could she do? But then, when she got there, the stone had been rolled away and the tomb was empty. How could this be happening? Just when she thought things couldn't get any worse, someone or some group of someones had stolen Jesus' body. Most likely, she suspected the Romans or the religious leaders who had put Jesus to death. Wasn't it enough that they had killed him? Was this some kind of sick joke to them? How evil can evil get? When we think about the history of humanity, we see all over and over again the unimaginable unimagin evil that we are capable of, the unimaginable darkness of it all. But then there is something else in there as well, is there not? As Mary wept, she bent down and looked inside the tomb for another look. And what she saw were two angels inside sitting where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other one at the feet. The angels asked Mary, why was she crying? They have taken away my Lord, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. And at this, we are told that she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not recognize that it was Jesus. She wasn't looking for a living Jesus. She was looking for an unrecognizable dead body, the way Jesus had looked when he hung on the cross. She thought Jesus was the gardener, the ordinary, the one person the only person she would have expected to see around a tomb early in the morning. But Jesus called her by name. And when he did, she allowed her eyes to be refocused and everything changed. Corey Ten Boom was arrested at the age of 47 during World War II, along with her elderly father sister, and other family members for hiding Jews from the Nazis. They were all sent to a concentration camp. On the way, there her father died. When they arrived at the camp, she, her sister, and many other women were ordered to undress in front of the mocking soldiers and sent to the showers. While in the camp, her only sister died. She would later be released and would go on to become an evangelist, traveling the world, sharing her personal story. At one meeting, after preaching on forgiveness, a German soldier who had stood guard at the shower room door at her concentration camp came up to her. She immediately recognized him. He thrust out his hand and said, How grateful I am! for your message, to think that, as you say, Jesus has washed my sins away. That's when all the memories flooded her mind again, the mocking soldiers, the piles of clothes, her dead father and sister. She couldn't raise her hand. In her book, the hiding place, she writes about what happened next. Even as the angry, vengeful thoughts boiled through me, I saw the sin of them. Jesus Christ had died for this man. Was I going to ask for more? Lord Jesus, I prayed, forgive me and help me to forgive him. I tried to smile. I struggled to raise my hand. I could not. I felt nothing, not the slightest spark of warmth or charity. And so again, I breathed a silent prayer. Jesus, I cannot forgive him. Give me your forgiveness. 
As I took his hand, the most incredible thing happened. From my shoulder, along my arm, and through my hand, the current seemed to pass from me to him, while into my heart sprang a love for this stranger that almost overwhelmed me. And so I discovered that it is not on our forgiveness any more than on our goodness that the world's healing hinges, but on his. When he tells us to love our enemies, he gives, along with the command, the love itself. In the face of crisis, Corey allowed her eyes to refocus and everything changed. The resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead is the greatest gift this world has ever been offered. It is the gift of God coming down as the light in the darkness, and the darkness cannot overcome it. The gates of hell cannot keep it out. It is the gift of hope for a world caught in death's cold grip. It is the something else when we look back at history of humanity. Someone put it like this the other day. Imagine a courtroom where someone is on trial for a horrible crime. Imagine walking into that courtroom and saying to the judge, I did it. I'm the guilty one who is guilty. Punish me for that crime. It's beyond conceivable, but it's exactly what Jesus has done for us, for all of us. It's something that none of us could ever do for ourselves. Without the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, there is no hope in this life. Hope is the sense that things will work out, that despite difficult circumstances and painful situations that might lead to crisis, something good is around the bend. Hope is something we cannot live without. Mary had lost all hope. And in the midst of it all, Jesus was right there. She looked at him, but she didn't see him. She thought he was the gardener. But then Jesus called her name. He offered her the gift of resurrection, of faith, of salvation. She opened herself up and allowed herself to receive the gift. And what was once pitch darkness turned into a great big flash of light. And she went running to tell the others, I have seen the Lord. And absolutely nothing on this planet has been the same since. Amen.
get some bread or something to drink, juice or wine or whatever you have handy so that you can participate with us. May the blessing of the elements, whatever they are, in this special time of Holy Communion on Easter night. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, you, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God brought us to a land flowing with milk and honey and set before us the way of life and so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven we praise your name and join their unending hymn holy holy holy, holy lord god of power and might heaven and earth are full of your glory Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered him from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. By your great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of your Son from the dead and to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Once we were no people, but now we are your people, declaring your wonderful deeds in Christ who called us out of the darkness into his marvelous light. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. On the day you raised him from the dead, he was recognized by his disciples in the breaking of bread. And in the power of your Holy Spirit, your church has continued in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. 
by your spirit make us one with christ one with each other and one in ministry to the world until christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your son jesus christ with the holy spirit in your holy church all honor and glory is yours almighty god now and forever amen blood of Christ shed for us. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ given for the forgiveness of your sins. Let us pray. Gracious loving God, your grace and your love is beyond bounds, beyond imagination. And we thank you for how in this simple way you remind us of the unending grace that you give us. So be with us now as we share that grace with all that we come to know. We have come to know you. In Christ's name we pray. creation, the God of salvation, the God that sustains us every single moment. May this God that loves you with all of life, because of all the life he has given us, this God goes with you. And I remind you that you are not alone and that you are truly loved. So go and celebrate that love with everyone you meet. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, go and be a blessing. Amen. Thank you for being with us throughout the service. We hope that you were able to find it inspiring. If you would like to make a donation, you can mail it to the church address, 15150 La Paz Drive, Victorville, California, 92395 or 404 East Mountain View Street, Barstow, California, 92311. You can also make an online donation through our church website, 
churchonthepause.com or vvumc.org. Remember, you can also listen to our service by calling 760-245-2529. We thank you for any help that you can provide as we're trying our best to do what we can in these trying times. Until next time, God bless you.